Yeah, I, uh, um, let's see. Um, no, I've been, uh, I went to a funeral this morning that lasted for two and a half hours, the longest, just the uh, service part of it. And it was Bob Ward, the conditioning coach of the Cowboys, longtime conditioning coach of the Cowboys. So I had a chance to see a lot of my former teammates and, uh, ter- former teammates and friends and, uh, uh, but goodness gracious, I also had a meeting that I missed it at lunch at, you know, at two. So, oh, well, but, um, but all is good. Um, uh, it's been an interesting time with the, uh, preparation for the hall of fame. I, I can just tell you. Yeah. Uh, a, long, a long, a long wait's finally ending. Well, it's, it's finally ending and, um, and, it's because there's two classes going in at the same time. Um, it's it's uh, been uh, more of a struggle trying to get everything uh, working properly. And uh, but it's in, and everything is is now lined up and almost ready to go. So I'm 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 getting anxious. I'm getting actually more than anxious. I'm getting a little antsy and nervous. So, so, uh, but, uh, it's, it's all going to be good. I I actually got to see Charlie today and, uh, at this, at this funeral and, uh, and Rogers, Roger Staubach and all my, and a lot of my buddies and, uh, and we're all, we're all talking about because Charlie was, you know, my presenter. So, uh, I asked him how I hope he did a good job because I know he's already done the video. So, uh, well, and NFL films do such a good job with that. Or there'll be things on there'll be things in there that you probably haven't seen before, or or maybe <laughs> you know, maybe remember from a long, long time ago that they'll find and and. Make- <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope that that. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see some things I haven't seen and uh, remember things I ha- haven't. Uh, uh, been thinking about in a long time. So it, this is, it's really going to be, um, I, I really don't know what to expect in the experience, you know, so, but all I know is I'm, um, I'm looking forward to it. Well, we've got uh, a couple of people who have done previous sessions and they, uh, they've already got their hand raised. And for folks who are coming in for the first time, that is how we'll recognize people, uh, to ask the questions. And I will, okay. I will call on them, Cliff, uh, uh, one at a time and, and uh, uh, hopefully be anybody who wants to ask a question can. I will make my way through uh, and, if, and if folks who have asked a question want to ask a second one, uh, we'll just uh, cycle back through again and, and we'll cover as much ground as we can here in the next 20, 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to let Mark lead things off for us and then James will come in next. Thank you. Well, well, thank you very much for uh, having me first here. Cliff, uh, let me say being a lifelong Dallas Cowboy fan, growing up watching you and Charles Waters was amazing, and congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Um, my question is actually a two-part question. Um, first, you were known for being a great hitter. Charlie Waters was the interceptor. What was the greatest hit that you can remember? I know Charlie Waters will say it was the one that you had on him, <laughs> and if you were playing today, how would the rules affect your game? Oh, you do differently. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, um, I can't. Uh, I know that uh, that I had a good hit on Ahmad Rashad um, in a in a game in Minnesota, um, and I um, hit him on the sidelines and uh, popped him pretty good. And the ground was hard and. Uh, it kind of banged him around and, and the, and I hit also at the same time, our cornerback, Aaron Kyle knocked them both out. So, uh, so <laughs> that was one, you know, there were, you know, there were, uh, there were guys that, uh, that, uh, that I liked to hit, uh, and tried, but, uh, uh, never got a real good hit on them. Like Lynn Swan. I wish I could have gotten one good hit on Lynn Swan. <laughs> I think we all would. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, he, he ran routes that I uh, know. Never mind. <laughs> you know, so, 
So I appreciate that. But the final part of that was how would the rules affect you today in your style of play? Well, I definitely think that uh, it would affect me enormously. Uh, the first thing that I think, you know, my dad uh, was a, uh, was a uh, guy that taught me how to hit and how to, how to really, he played football at Washita Baptist where I did. And, uh, uh, and you hit through somebody and, uh, that's something that, and I think that my physiology and the way that my brain works, it knew how to hit a guy exactly right that punished him the most and hurt me the least. Well, when you put that into today's kind of game, that means that, you know, you have to try to, so my, my hit was an instinctive hit that, an instinctive hit that knew exactly where my my trajectory, all these things were working in my brain exactly that I didn't plan one way or another, knew where to hit exactly at the weakest spot. Well, today, when you got to dodge somebody's helmet, I mean, I, I just can't understand how guy, more guys aren't hurt because they they've got to turn their head at the last moment and – uh, and dodge and try to hit one way or another. And it just, uh, it's just amazing to me that, uh, that there are not more defensive backs and uh, really defensive backs injured today. And it definitely would have affected my, my game enormously. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, good deal. I'll look Thanks, forward to it. Mark, uh, James, you're up and, and Ms. Craft, you're on deck. Thanks, Rich, and, uh, and congratulations, Cliff. I'll echo what Mark said growing up here in the Dallas area. I was, a, you know, as a kid, I was a fan long before I was in the media. Um, Good, James. Yeah, really happy for you. Um, and just to follow up on Mark's question, I'm curious, you know, football in the 70s versus football, now here we are in the 20s. <laughs> uh, yeah. The game has evolved quite a bit, so I would like to get your take. Obviously, it would have, as you mentioned, it would have affected your game. But has the way the game evolved, both from a physicality and a safety standpoint, yeah, is it better now? And 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 the product on the field, you know, Roger threw 15, 20 times, twenty five. Yeah. Now it's <laughs> that's a halftime, you know. So yeah, just talk yeah, talk about that. Well, I th I think that you know that's a good question, a good perspective. You know, I think that uh, first of all, I think that I would have had to have changed my protect my game plan my game theory because my theory was really to uh, eliminate inside patterns with receivers well that helps a lot for the corners when the when the corners know that man I'm on the inside and when they run an inside route out they're going to get hit well um, so today it, it's so different that um, because there's no uh, concern about running inside routes because they and the receivers are so much bigger today, you know, there's really no punishing way that you're going to hit a guy reasonably. But, um, and so it definitely would have changed the game. And not only that, there is a lot more, uh, more of the receivers are out, they're splitting them out wider and you're, there's more man to man coverage. So, you know, I came in as a cornerback and moved me to free safety, but boy, you've got to be able to, uh, cover those guys and uh, cover those guys today uh, from the safety position. Um, you know, they can disguise it a lot, and, but the overall of, you know, throwing a, a big net out and then tightening that net, today's defense, tightening that net as you draw closer to the goal line is um, – is not an, a even, and that's what they have to do today because by the rules and uh, you you can't put a lot of pressure on them early in the field. So you have to let them work their way down the field and tighten up the defense when you when, at the when they get closer in. This is my perspective of the way I think that it it looks overall today. Thanks and congratulations. Thank you, James. Ms. Kraft, you're up, and then Joe Rudder. Hi, Cliff. Um, just wanted to talk to you about COVID-19. You know, we're kind of past that, I guess, but then, yeah. but now we've got this variant that's kind of scary out there. Um, 
we all want to get back in the stadium and watch some games, but what do you think the NFL could do to kind of encourage the fans to get vaccinated? Well, I mean, <laughs> so do you mean, is this related to man-to-man -man coverage or zone? Oh, no, this is... <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this know, is more of a I human mean, interest I, question. <laughs> I understand that. So, uh, well, I mean, they, I mean, can get on the bandwagon and say, ask folks. I mean, we could, you know, they could do commercials and say, hey, get vaccinated so that we'll all be healthy, uh, healthier people, and uh, um, and you know, and maybe you know that influence could reach a certain number of people that might not have been able. to they might not have been able to reach before so it's something they could you know run and get some of the guys on tv that i mean i've been vaccinated i you know i mean you you i mean i really never really thought of myself as a tough guy i mean i thought i was tough when i got hurt but i but i i was smart enough to get both, both my vaccines you know yeah. <laughs> so I'm, thank you very much you're welcome. Joe and then uh, Chris Babb. Yeah, hey Cliff, uh, you're gonna be going in with another you know, dominant safety from your era in Donnie Shell. Did you guys have any kind of uh, professional rivalry there in the seventies when you guys were you know, meeting at the Super Bowl so those times? And uh, you know, do you have any kind of relationship to this day? Yeah, I mean, Donnie's a great guy. I, he and I uh, yeah, had chances to visit in these uh, meetings that we've had in in preparation for the um, in preparation for uh, our both in Hall of Fame induction, and we appreciated each other's style. You know, I know you know the thing that I I, I think the most the things that are most apparent for uh, or safeties that talk to each other is the is the ability to uh, not the hitting side of the thing, but the ability to, to um, win the game through strategic, strategically. And I think that Donnie was really good at that. I think I was good at that. And that was one of the things that, um, and trying to keep a quarterback off guard or, and doing things that, that kept, that allowed that few moments of a, uh, that quarterback setting up ready to pass uh, for the defensive line to get in and get them. And I think that he did a really good job of uh, uh, playing and knew when to make the big play and, and make those big plays. And so, uh, you know, even though he was a stealer, I always respected him. We always laughed. I mean, it was not like, you know, uh, it was not like uh, the – same kind of relationship I have with Lynn Swan. So, you know, so we understood each other. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Joe. Up is Chris, and then next will be Brad Sham. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get, to, uh, get to go in front of Brad. Thanks. Um, hey, Cliff. Uh, hey, Chris. Yeah. How you doing? Good. Hey, uh, there's a picture of you and Coach Benson when you were signing your free agent contract with Coach Benson over your shoulder. Yeah. If he or anybody else had told you 50 years later you'd be going into the Hall of Fame, what would you have told them? And also, uh, kind of related to that, uh, Hall of Fame inductees say that this is a culmination of a lot of work and it takes a lot of people. What does it mean to have the you you stayed in contact with a lot of your college teammates? What does it mean to have the support of those guys and and also have several of those be in Canton with you uh, in August? Oh, it's going to be great. I we've uh, I've been uh, I've been. Uh, Looking forward, I've been coordinating uh, the Hall of Fame invitees with David Sharp, the athletic director there, and uh, uh, it's um, and he's been very, very helpful. He's already been to Canton up there, and so through him and through uh, through him, I've helped me in, in the coordination. Of, good gosh, I had 300 people, or not really 600 people that I was working, trying to weed down to try to get the right number that the Hall's allowing this year with 10 of the guys coming in and, you know, and playing. Um, so it, it's been, it worked really well and it's really well coordinated. 
you know, and playing at Washita, uh, my dad played at Washita, as you know, and uh, uh, I'm, I mean, it's just an unbelievable dream that I wish Coach Benson could uh, see his family's going to be there and uh, uh, Gary and Miss Benson. And uh, I'm really excited about them seeing this small part of such a large uh, dream that's really come true. I mean, for me and uh, um, and I don't think that uh, when I came to Washita as a freshman uh, quarterback, when I was then, when I came in as a quarterback, and uh, I don't think I was thinking of the Hall of Fame then. I was trying to survive Coach Benson's two a day, 110 degree practices out there. So I was, uh, uh, you know, that came a little later. You know, uh, you've got to have your ambitions, I guess. You know, maybe I should have thought, well, I'm going to be in the NFL Hall of Fame, excuse me, Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, back when I was a freshman and that was where my goal was, but that wasn't the reality. Well, congrats. We're happy for you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for the good question. Look forward to seeing you guys soon. Uh, Brad Sham and then Quentin. Thank you, uh, Rich Clifford. That, uh, uh, Oh, when he said my name before was thoroughly unnecessary. Uh, <laughs> I, I would like to know, I have two questions for you. One is as it gets closer, does it seem more real or more surreal? And the second question is, now that you know it's happening, does the yes. weight make any difference anymore? Well, I'll, can I answer the uh, last one first? You're the Hall of Fame, you do whatever you want. Okay, so th that it's happening, the reality of it happening uh, makes it, I mean, there's really, I'm, I know it's going to be happening now and I'm, 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 and I, I can't believe it, uh, still to this day, but the, you know, you know, Brad, you've been, we've been friends a long time and having, uh, this is, is an unreal, it's an unreal, uh, unreal situation for me to think that I'm going into the NFL hall of fame and, um, and that that's actually going to happen. And, you know, I've been uh, for, I've been trying to prep Charlie Waters, my presenter for uh, on what, uh, and I saw him today at Bob Ward's funeral, by the way. Uh, and, um, and uh, I put some pressure on him and asked him how he was, uh, uh, how good of a job he did, but uh, uh, it was, uh, it's going to be a really interesting, unbelievable experience. Did I answer your question well or no? Uh oh. Well, well, well enough. And and what about the weight? Tell me. Now that now that you now that it's happening, does it matter that uh, that you waited a little bit? Um. Well, yeah. That's the weight has made it um, has diminished the excitement a little bit. And it's made it more complicated a little bit, but um, because there's going to be two two groups going in at the same time, right? And the and the weight it, it is gone down, but it now that it's the reality that I'm going to Canton in a couple of weeks, all of a sudden it's my fire is lit up again. Cliff, I'm sorry, I didn't mean the weight from last year. I meant the weight from the number of years since you stopped playing. Oh, well. You know, um, yeah, that's, well, that's another good, good question. I, um, my, you know, the, when Rayfield and I were up and we were finalists in it and Rayfield went in and I didn't, and you know, I, there was an enormous amount of, you know, wow, you're close enough to get into the hall of fame. And, uh, and so it meant that every year, wow, you know, making the finals, maybe there's a chance this year and there's a chance the next year. Well, I mean, that's put that in, my, then I kind of, it kind of waned a bit and um, for the reality for all of a sudden that it happens uh, was, is unbelievable. I mean, uh, because, you know, that all that long wait, um, it, kind of made me think, I mean, I'm a logical thinking guy that there was going to be a, um, 
you know, their chances are diminishing every year. Uh, that's the way I looked at it. But, uh, but I, but I'm so, I, I'm so happy this year that it, it truly happened. And, um, uh, I, I, I can't wait for, uh, to, to, I, to, to feel it now, you know, I mean, when I get up there, that's what I've been talking to Rayfield, right. My buddy, the guy Rayfield, he's been calling me and telling me what to expect and everything. So we've been talking and I've been talking to Drew, you know, uh, or I've been listening to Drew, I should say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's been, uh, it's been good. There's it, we're, I'm really looking forward. I'm looking, I hope you're going up there. I'll, I'll be there. Look forward to seeing you. Congratulations. That'll be, thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Quentin, you're up. And then next will be Vernon. How you doing today, Cliff? I'm doing great, Quentin. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I made it out of pro foot. I saw Charlie Waters today and he was strong safety and I'm free safety. And man, he was hobbled around today. So pro and a bunch of the guys up there and you probably know the, the thinking is, I mean, there are guys that are hobbled and they're beaten up and they they they're suffering so many guys who had canes and I'm lucky to be blessed to be as healthy as I am. Okay. So what were you, what were your memories of Tom Landry? Well, Tom Landry was, um, a, I mean, I mean, without Tom Landry's flex defense, um, and his system, I don't think I would have made it to the pro football hall of fame. I think that, he, he, I got his system and cause there were, we had 50 different defenses that we were running, trying to confuse a quarterback. I got it. And he knew that I got his system and I knew how to make, make his system work. Uh, you know, back in the, when I started <laughs> pro football, there was cover one and cover two man to man and zone and a little bit of mixture of both. So the system fit me really well i mean the landry flex system fit me really well i could attack i could confuse the quarterbacks and do all those things and uh uh but he is a man um he knew the kind of people that he could relate to because he would say to me sometimes he said cliff you know this is his way of motivating you he said cliff you know that you're supposed to be over here on this strong side, uh, helping Mel on the inside post route and not making a tackle up on the line of the scrimmage. He said, do you, do you get, know that? Do you get that? I said, yes, sir. And I knew what he meant. He said, he was trying to tell me, don't be too aggressive and go up there and make those tackles. You may, if you, cause if you make a mistake, we're going to throw you out. Well, I got it. I, that motivated me and made me, I mean, he knew that, he, I mean, my personality type let him know that I would get what he said. If that makes, if I'm, you know, cause I, I was, you know, other players might not, but I, I got it and the real, real subtle hint. He didn't need to yell and scream at me. He was a real quiet man that led by strategy and technique and, and the insecurity that everybody or a lot of the guys felt like me that, hey, doesn't matter. You've got the Landry system and the Landry system, you're a cog in a wheel. We can take you out and put you back in. And that's what motivated me. Uh, that's what motivated me uh, to play. And it's what motivated a lot of guys. Also, if you were playing in today's game, which players would you want to love to go up against? Um, I'm trying to think of some that uh, that aren't real big and aren't, and aren't fast, and I don't think they're out there today. <laughs> there are some there are some there are some big receivers that you know, goodness gracious, I mean, they're just some really tough guys out there today, and that. And with a lot of speed, man, the, the time for the mistake in the era of coming up and tackling or uh, has gone down a lot. I, you know, guys like Harold Carmichael was was uh, that's going in with me uh, was unique. I think that uh, uh, the most uh, of the players today are 
their hero size or bigger. Thanks, Quentin. Let's go to uh, Vernon and then next Todd Archer. Vernon, Vernon, unmute. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Harris, on getting to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, Thank my you, first Bernie. question, if I could, yeah, you're very welcome, sir. Uh, I wanted to speak to your durability because uh, five of your years you played 14, yep. started 14 of the 14 games, and then two years in 78, 79 is when they went to 16 games. And then today we see a lot of players that that do get hurt a lot, a, a lot more often to take more time off and miss more games. Could you just speak to your durability in a time where you guys didn't have today's modern medicine and training and technology to keep you guys healthy back in your day, and, and what kept you? Um, so healthy and kept you on the field so consistently? Well, I can tell you one of the things that did was the funeral that I just went to today, Bob Ward, who was our conditioning coach for the Cowboys for many years. And he and he had a functional strength program with the way he called it. And it looked related to the position that you had and the kind of strength you'd have. And, you know, I think that when I went to a, a dinner the other night where a lot of the cowboys were there oh my gosh there were so many guys that had i mean later on in life had hips replaced shoulders replaced leroy jordan's had both both shoulders both knees and one hip replaced i'm so fortunate i've not had anything replaced i've only had one surgery in my my life i think that uh there's a durability factor that i had genetically and I think that I stayed in really good shape. And I think that my size also may, may have helped me because I wasn't a bigger guy and I wasn't a small, right at that perfect, that perfect size of, you know, I played at 190, 190, between 190 and 195. And if I'd been up at 200, man, that, that can injure you more when you hit a guy harder. So I, I think that it was just a combination. I think it was a combination of being an A plus, A plus, 99.9% conditioning and, uh, and just the gift of God having the durability to, uh, to, to make, make it. And of course, you know, you need to throw in that factor a little bit of toughness, you know. So, you know, I mean, I did play with pain uh, many times and, you know, you just got to, you just got to get over it. You know, yeah. I figured toughness was a big part of it. I didn't want to use that <laughs> word. You, you start to be the old guy at the barber shop saying guys aren't as tough today. Thank you for taking my question and congratulations again, Thank Mr. You. Harris. Thank you. I agree with you. <laughs> Todd Archer, you're up, and John Shearer, you're next. Thank you. Hey, Cliff, congratulations. It's good to see you. I'm, I'm just curious, have you been to Canton before any of this started? And, and if not, what are you most looking forward to, to seeing uh, when you get up there? Well, I, I haven't I haven't been up there uh, in a long time. I think we played a game up there many many years ago, and I've not been into the museum where the the busts are. But um, you know, I, I'd really like to see what the what it looks like. You know, I mean, I'm really anxious to see what the, what it looks like, and I've heard that it's surreal and that it's really inspirational. Um, I'm 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 looking forward to um, to getting up there uh, and getting the feel of the what the what I get from around these other great Hall of Famers. I mean, they um, you know we had a little touch of that when we were in the in the Super Bowl, but um, with the Hall of Fame guys there. And um, but but what was your exact question what do you what am i answering it correctly what are you most looking forward to going up to you, you mentioned the bus room do, do you think the the thousands of players that have played in this game and the how few are actually in the hall what will that mean to see your bus in that room next to some of those greats oh uh, my god that'll be there forever yeah i know and one of the one of the things ty was that you know i you know when i was a kid or a kid when I was at school in Washita, Larry Wilson for the St. Louis Cardinals, who just recently had passed away, um, is was one of my idols. I went up to you know because because uh, they would broadcast the Cardinal games, and I 
I didn't get to see him when I went up to the hall uh, last year because he wasn't there. I did meet his son. And, I, you know, there's guys that, you know, that are in the Hall of Fame that uh, I've respected for so many years that I, I want to really get up there and, and see them and, and meet them and, uh, um, and uh, get there and get that feel I want to see in that and what kind of feel I get when I walk into that and, the, and see all those busts. I, I can't wait to, for Charlie Waters to come up and unveil mine and I'll see what it feels like. Man. It's going to be a unique, a unique feeling. Thanks, Todd. Let's go to John and then Mark, and then we'll we'll check in with uh, Mr. Harris and see how he's doing on time. I'm good on time. I, I, I blocked it all. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Harris. Thank you for taking my uh, thank you for taking my question. I appreciate it. You bet, John. All righty. Uh, so you've been to five Super Bowls. You've won two, and you're going to the Hall of Fame. Which means more, uh, the Super Bowls or going to the Hall of Fame? Thank you. <laughs> That's a, uh, well, I don't think uh, that I would have been in the Hall of Fame if we hadn't won the Super Bowls. I think that if we could have beaten Pittsburgh in one of those Super Bowls, I would have been in the Hall of Fame sooner. And I think if we had beaten them in both of those Super Bowls, I would have been in real early. And uh, so the, the, you know, getting in um, – is going to be something that um, I should have, if, if, if it had been, we had won those games, we would have, uh, I think I'd have been in a little sooner. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. You betcha. All right, Mark, you're up. And then uh, Chris Osborne. Hey, Cliff, Mark Bona, cleveland.com, the plane dealer. Uh, another person asked if he had been to Canton before. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you about Cleveland. Um, I, I, it takes you back a ways. I'm curious if you have any memories, memorable moments, uh, either stellar moments on the field with the fans, anything in any of the games that you played in. There were a, a small handful against the Browns when you were playing. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I do have a – I remember playing in Cleveland and it being a muddy field, and uh, you had a great tight end uh, – during my era, uh, that uh, this it's this is a terrible way to live your life. That you remember, you know, I you remember the bad plays that you don't. And you know, it's funny that I I don't remember the interceptions running back for touchdowns. I do remember the routes that the I can tell you the tight end ran a receipt ran a, a turn in and go, and he was my man. And uh, and Coach Landry was had told me. Hey, be ready for that. And sure enough, I wish I could remember the tight end's name, but he ran it and I went for it and he made a touchdown over me in, in Cleveland. But I think we ended up winning the game though. But it's a, I mean, there's, you know, it's it, it's one of those stadiums that has the character and today they, you know, with the AstroTurf, I'm sounding like an older guy, uh, which I am, but uh, it's one of those stadiums that, uh, that has a great feel about it, you know, and there was, there was some great teams during that era that played at Cleveland. Thank you. Chris, you're up and then Alex. Hey, Mr. Harris, congratulations. This is Chris Osborne from Sports and Culture Sports Media. So you went from undrafted to the Hall of Fame. That, that's got to be special. It's got to mean something to you. Uh, was there a motivating factor from that that helped you get through the two a days get through the long nights uh studying playbooks or was there something else that that really pushed you along that's a good question um i you know uh well first of all um we trained the cowboys trained in thousand oaks california uh and so when we trained when i was playing football at Washita Baptist in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, the temperatures will get to be 105, you know, and humidity is 98%. We went to Thousand Oaks, you know, it was, um, it was, uh, you know, the temperatures in the nineties, there was not, no humidity. So there was an advantage that I had there, but I, I think that when 
um, I came in from Washita. I think the biggest, one of the big things that happened was that, you know, I'd never cooked. I was a big Arkansas Razorback fan. I'd never been in a D1 school. I'd never, you know, been out on the field, never covered a guy. And, and we had 20 defensive backs that year, rookies that trying out for the Cowboys. Then I made the starting lineup that year, uh, only rookie to make the starting lineup. But all of a sudden, I saw these receivers that were, holy cow, these guys that were from, you know, Texas, Ohio State, you know, Oklahoma, they were just guys. And I said, oh, my gosh, I can get I can cover these guys. And not only that, hey, I wonder if I can knock any of these guys out. And sure enough that, you know, when I got up there, I mean, the more the more that I began to see that they're just guys, the better I covered them, the more confidence I had, because, you know, and being a free agent, there was kind of a, a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. I wanted to, I wanted to prove that I could do it. I wanted to make sure that, you know, that I did the very best I could do and in, uh, in for myself. And, uh, uh, but I, I, uh, I think the reality that came to me that, that, you know, I expected, you know, guys that were sick, well, like today's, uh, today's pro receivers, you know, uh, I expected more of that than just normal. They were my size. There was a, I, I had to cover uh, Lance Allworth, who was an all American. We had just traded for Lance. I think it was my first or second year. And, um, uh, I was a big hero of Lance Allworth. And uh, I said, oh, I said, oh, there's, I said, there's no way I can cover my hero. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so when he took off, he caught a ball looking over his right shoulder with his left hand. So I, I was, so I, I, so it was a, it was a blessing in disguise. You know, he was a good guy. We became good friends and during that time, but that was a, but, at, you know, making it out of Washita Baptist and my chances weren't very, weren't very, weren't very big. Well, I sincerely apologize that you were an Arkansas Razorback fan. I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan, but I, I appreciate you and uh, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Alex, you're up and then we'll go to Chris Daly. How you doing, Mr. Harris? Alex I'm Fleming, good. Florida Sun. Hey, Alex. Um, I have so many questions for you. So let me let me try to make them. <laughs> um, one, if you could give advice to today's Dallas Cowboys safety and corners, what would you give them Two, um, if you could change something about today's game? What is it about today's game that you're not particularly fond of? And three, on a scale of one to ten on a funky scale, what would you rate yourself? <laughs> you need to ask i'll go backwards uh uh the funky scale my son would say unfunky <laughs> but let me tell you i listen to i'm a music guy i listen to every kind of music there is and i like it my mother was a music major um and uh and and uh so i'm a i'm a music guy so i'm a i'm a, a, a tunes guy Alex, what was the other the other one? Tell me your other question. Um, I actually had two. Uh, I, the first one I asked you was, um, if you could give advice to today, oh yeah, Cowboys secondary, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would be so two, well, what would you think about today's game? I mean, that's a real tough question, man, because that um, that's a real tough question because um, I don't know there their scheme, you know, I mean, I'm a, a guy that's a, a, a guy that fits a, fits a specific defense and makes, um, uh, makes that defense work. If, um, if I could tell them, uh, to, I mean, you could say all the cliches, you know, go a hundred percent, don't let up, don't be, um, be, I see it. I think that they are second guessing sometimes. That's just my my look. I think that they are 
not playing aggressively. I think like I was describing earlier, they throw a big net out there and it tightens up to the end zone. I think it's a, uh, I think that's the, the, the overall thought process of that defense. And I think that they need to try to get in that, that defense up there. I mean, close it in sooner, close the deep, get a run, a run a tighter defense and get after them a little bit bit more. Does that make Thanks, it does make sense. Yes, sir. All right. Chris Daly and then Jake. Yeah, hey, Cliff. Firstly, just a lot of respect for you from going to a small school all the way to the Hall of Fame. And my question for you is your father was a war hero and a football player as well. And he really means a lot to you. So what does your father mean to you? And what did he teach you about the game and about just life as a whole? Well, oh, my gosh, that's a my dad, you know, um, was a fighter pilot. He was shot down in the South Pacific and was on a raft for two days and survived. So he was a tough guy. And he taught me, you know, I, as I, I mentioned earlier, he taught me how to hit through guys and um, to aim like they do in karate. You know, you aim for the other side. And so I knew how to um, – hit guys early and um i think that's just an instinct thing uh and but he um he was uh you know he was uh, also an example for me because he had diabetes he lost his vision and uh and lost his vision and i and it never bothered him and it never never um never you never saw that he felt ever felt sorry for himself and so there was an edge about mental toughness that when I see him give himself a shot in the morning, that's why I'm on the board of Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. When I see him give a shot of insulin to himself in the morning, I'm saying, man, that's a tough guy. And you, you've got to be not only tough physically, you've got to be tough mentally in pro football. And I think that I learned from him mental toughness uh, that's one thing that i that i think that was something that um that uh and you know the toughness of you know not being afraid or ten, uh, uh intimidated by large crowds and you know going out because i played at washita baptist we didn't have two thousand people to come to a game then i go in to play in uh, san diego stadium they had eighty thousand. you know the first time i was in there so I mean, it's, it's a, that's a mental toughness that you can, that you have to learn over time that helped you every little bit of mental toughness you can develop about, you know, the stadium, the injury, the overcoming the, 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 your, the, the quarterback winning, competing against them and making sure that you can have, do everything that you can possibly do that, uh, to study. I was a real student of the game and studied a whole lot of Coach Landry, put out enormous amounts, big data sheets, and I was a real student of the game and really understood uh, what anticipated what the, um, what the other team, the other quarterback was going to do. So, you know, it came from my dad. You know, he taught me how that that discipline brought me discipline, and uh, I was a real real fortunate, real fortunate yeah. guy. That's great, Jake, and then Cameron. Hey, Cliff, uh, appreciate you taking the time. I uh, I got two questions for you, if that's okay. Yeah. So first of all, we talked about Harold Car Harold Carmichael just a little bit. Obviously, he's coming into the Hall of Fame with you this year, and I'm sure yes. you guys played each other. Plenty, and you know him very well, oh. being in the NFC East against each other for all those years. Oh, many times, yeah. So the first question is, you played him so many times, you faced off against him more times than you could probably count. Were there any plays or games that you like, oh, that stick gosh. out in your mind that you just you <laughs> wish you could take back? No, did Harold tell you this question? I think he did. He must have <laughs> because I, when I first saw him, when we just got together, when we both made it, I. There, see, this gets back to that theory that I mean about the way that that a defensive back or a defensive guy sees the 
sees the game, you look at your mistakes, you remember those. And I, and I said, uh, Harold, do you remember uh, a game in Dallas? He said, oh, yeah, Cliff, I remember. I didn't even have to go far with it because it was on my birthday. And I remember it was a Monday night game. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, and Harold ran a, uh, Harold ran a, uh, in the game plan that I studied, I knew what they were going to do. I knew that he was going to run a post route on third and 16 or whatever it was, third and 12. And sure enough, he was faking. He did run a post route for just a little bit. Then he cut to the corner and beat me. Uh, on the corner and uh, the uh, and the quarterback was going for the post and held it back and threw it dropped it on the quarter and I said do you remember that play and he said oh yeah I remember that play so uh, so that's why he beat me in 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 Texas Stadium that time on a post corner route uh, I remember really well that, that's awesome but my other question was you were part of the teams that brought not only the first but also the second championship or Super Bowl rather to the Cowboys fans so I wanted to ask you about specifically that first one in the early 70s what was that like with the fan base bringing home the first Super Bowl to what it would be you know to what would become a a storied franchise well there was a story behind that too that uh, Bob Lilly that was a team that before I came to the Cowboys, they were beaten by Green Bay. They were beaten by Cleveland. They always get to the playoffs and lose the big one. And I went in my rookie year. I made the starting lineup. And I'll not forget this. The first game in, in the Cotton Bowl where we were playing at the time, Bob Lilly said, um, hey, rookie, in the defensive huddle, we were the first play on the field, hey, rookie, we're going to the Super Bowl this year. And I don't want you to do anything to mess it up. And I was like, he didn't know my name. You know, I said, yes, sir, Mr. Lilly. Sure enough, we didn't, they, we didn't get to the Super, we got to the Super Bowl, we didn't win it. Well, he didn't say I had, we had to win it. So, uh, so we, <laughs> so uh, the next year we came back and went to, um, and won the, the game. Uh, and I was a second year player uh, at uh, beat Miami in, um, in New Orleans. And um, so, you know, I mean, I, I think it was a team. It is, it always is a team. There's something that takes place within a team that makes it a magical team. And that's every one of those guys want, every one of them want to win the game so much and get to a Super Bowl and have to have the same common belief and com- common thinking that, um, that's going to that's going to get you to the Super Bowl, man. That team was driven to go to the Super Bowl, and we won. I was a second year guy, young guy, you know. I was twenty two years old, and really didn't um, didn't really. Um, I mean, I was the a, a good player in that team, but I, a leader later when we went back and we beat Denver the second time uh, in Super Bowl. Uh, 12, we came back and and we really just kind of dominated that season and played in it. So the games that I want to win are are the games that we lost. The Pittsburgh 10 and the Super Bowl and 10 and 13, we were so close. But it was great to, I mean, I was great to be a part of them. Cliff, are you good for three more? Yeah. All right, we got three hands up. These will be our last three. We'll go okay. uh, Cameron, Vernon, and Mark. Hey, Mr. Harris, it's an honor to talk to you. Um, uh, I just wanted – I had two quick questions. Um, the first one is uh, your your play time with, uh, with Charlie Waters. Um, I, I consider it one of the greatest uh, duos of safeties in the – not only in the, in the decade, but in the uh, – in, in the NFL history. And um, I, was, I was wondering if you guys more had a, a professional relationship or had both a professional and a personal relationship when you were, you know, friends on the field and off the field. Um, and my last question is, uh, you were voted to the Pro Bowl six times in a row, um, which is a great, a, a great uh, thing to say about yourself. Um, and uh, I, I just want to know if you have any, like, stories about your, your teammates on the Pro Bowl teams that you're on and if there's any, like, interesting things that you're in, in that area in the Pro Bowl. 
Well, first of all, um, Charlie and I, uh, I just, just saw him just recently. And ironically, it was at the, uh, uh, the funeral of our weightlifting coach, uh, extra, um, uh, Bob Ward. Uh, and Charlie and I always were real competitive with each other. You know, one of us, we thought in the very beginning, one of us was going my first year, his, my, both rookie years, we were rookies together. I thought that we both thought, hey, we're, one of us is going to make it and the other one's going to be cut. And uh, Coach Landry uh, and, the, and the decision team process kept all both of us. And uh, but I started as a corner. He ended up playing corner uh, when um, later when I was safety. And then he ended up playing strong safety when I was free safety. And we were yin and yang. You know, he is an artist. I'm a mathematician. I'm a physicist. He's a, you know, he's he's a painter. So I understand. So we together, the way that we approached the game was that we he had a different perspective than I did and looking at it and the way that he looked at it and the way that I looked at it. And but together it made for a better union. You know, if we both thought the same way, we probably could have been beaten, but we made a really a great bond because we were different, um, different in thinking, you know, I mean, and, and different perspectives, but it accepted and believed and trusted each other's um, strengths. And uh, so therefore we made our, made the team better. Um, we were really good friends. We raced motocross uh, in, uh, in the off season, we raced motocross and under assumed names because coach Landry, uh, didn't, uh, allow riding dirt bikes. And so we, but I, but I was better and I'd beat Charlie. I'm telling him he can say that, you know, so we'd compete in everything we did. And, uh, but, um, and then, um, I mean, so, and I think we understood each other really well, which made a, a great combo. And I couldn't have picked a better guy because we both understood the Landry system. That's the the best thing is that we knew how to operate his his system. And I think that's that Coach Landry saw it and that uh, that uh, we both uh, learned how to, I mean, maximize his system. That's what we did together. Um as far as the Pro Bowls, man, I was what got me out of pro football was an injured neck. Uh, I was paralyzed. My doctor says I'll say paralyzed. I was momentarily paralyzed on the field because I had a injured neck of all things. And luckily, I, and I would be I would be stunned when I'd hit somebody the wrong way. And uh, one time we were playing in the Coliseum and Pat Hayden was the quarterback and he cut back on me and, and, and jammed my neck and I couldn't move. I was laying on the ground. I said, man, if a quarterback can knock me out, it's time to retire. So we'd play in the Pro Bowls and uh, gosh, nobody's going full speed except the running backs because the linemen aren't, the defensive linemen aren't, the defensive linebackers, so they're coming full speed at, at the safeties, you know, the running backs are, because there's nobody going really except you, so you had to stop them. Well, when I hit, when I tackled those guys, you know, my neck was not good, and that's what got me, really got me out of, uh, out of pro football. It was make, you know, I, I, I knew that when I'd have those, I, I didn't want to take the risk anymore. Thanks, Cameron. Vernon? I'm back, Mr. Harris. I didn't want to crowd and take up too much time. I had another question before, but I was able to get it in now. Okay. So uh, thank you. Also, to salute to your father. I come from a military family. My mother was a colonel in the Pentagon. My father was an MP and an Airborne Ranger. I, myself, was a 14 Romeo Air Defense Artillery. So salute to oh, your wow. father, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank sir. you very much. Thank you. Uh, funny question. Um, favorite player for you to watch today? And second part, What's the best part? All of this, your career, small college, NFL, Dallas Cowboys, Super Bowl, all the way to the Hall of Fame. What's the best part of being in the Hall of Fame now? But first part of the question, favorite player for you to watch today? Um, 
All right. So my my guy that I've liked and I pulled for and is going to come around this year for us oh. is Dak Prescott. And uh, <laughs> and I, you know, I've been a Dak fan for a long time. And uh, and I know that and I was so because, you know, he reminds me this goes back too far. This is probably before I definitely before your time. But uh, uh, Billy Kilmer, because Billy ah. Kilmer was for the Washington Redskins. Yep. And, man, he was a good friend of mine. It's funny how so many of the quarterbacks were good friends of mine, Jim Hart Jim, and Kilmer and uh, a bunch of those guys. And uh, uh, But he's a winner, you know. He's got a big heart. And I think that it's something that's contagious on a team to have a leader like we had the great leader of Roger Staubach to that, just an edge that you have to have that edge of winning. It takes something more than a great team um, to win, to win a Super Bowl. I mean, gosh, it, it's just amazing how close teams come with that little bit of an edge. And I think Dak's got that edge. I'm, I'm pulling, I'm pulling for him. He's the guy that I, uh, that I, that I, uh, and pulling for and would like to watch the most. How about that? Okay. And the small college aspect, what do you mean? What do you, what? Just, just the best part, just from beginning to end, your story, honestly, from beginning to end, what's just the best part when you sit back now and you, you're you going in, what's the best part of all of this, the culmination of it? Wow, I, that's, a he, that's a heavy duty thought. I, um, wow. Wow. Um, I, oh gosh, uh, I, I think I too want to get emotional about, about this, but, um, uh, um, uh, um, and, and you being in the military, uh, my dad, I'm sitting here looking at his, I wish I could show you, I can't, I'm going to show you his. So right here, he was a P-38 pilot. See those, see those, uh, see that uh, flag up there. Can you see that? Yes, sir. You know, so that's his what, it, and he had purple heart and uh, oh wow, uh, distinguished flying cross. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I want him to. <laughs> I feel it, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, that's something that uh, that I really believe. Uh, I mean, I'd like to have him uh, see this. He was a tough guy. He was a tough guy, and uh, tough guy. And man, you you got to be a tough guy to fly a P thirty eight, crash in the ocean, survive on a raft for two days, and then the thing that happened about this is that he was then tested to be a jet test pilot at the end of the war, and he was so excited about it. Gave him his physical. He had diabetes. Washed him out of the Air Force. Never flew again. So he lost his dream. And I didn't lose mine. I got my, my dream, you know. So I think one thing about me is I'm a passionate guy, and uh, uh, and I get choked up, and I'm a tough guy, but I <laughs> also <laughs> one of those guys that you about to get me choked up over here, Mister Harris. Come <laughs> on now, come on now, sir. Come on now, sir. Sorry, sorry, Vernon. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. But, but well, thank you, and like good. I said, salute to your yes, father. Thank, thank you for you. taking my question. Thank you. Today. Yes, Congratulations, Mister Harris. Thank you. That was a wonderful answer, Cliff. All right, Mark Holmes, uh, you started us off. Let's bring it home. I, I am truly blessed today to be talking to you, um, to start off and to be able to finish. And it's hard to uh, go through that emotion. I, I'm going to try and make you laugh. Because <laughs> okay, of, that's uh, good. Dak Prescott, and then you start talking about Billy Kilmer. <laughs> watching Kilmer's, we used to always go in the backyard and we throw a duck, and literally the football would be a duck and say, that's a Kilmer pass. <laughs> so uh, putting the two exactly. of those together, I'm not sure that's the on, best one. <laughs> he could beat you on a duck, though. Oh, he, uh, he would. That, it, it, I hated the Washington football team uh, <laughs> today. But after having uh, the stellar career that you had, and I'm sure you played football all your life, um, I know you ended up having business with Charlie Waters, which I'm sure made the transition uh, a lot better having your teammates still right there with you. Yeah. How ready were you for football ending? It sounded like uh, with the neck injury, it wasn't something you were expecting. And what would you tell the players going forward here 
to be prepared for the end of football? Well, you know, uh, Mark, uh, uh, this is, I mean, a different era, right? Mm -hmm. So my, I worked in the off season in the energy business and, um, and I was lucky to have that business and, and the guy at Max Williams at U.S. Companies said, hey, Cliff, thank goodness this happened that he said, you've either got to decide whether you're going to work in my business or you're going to go back and play next year. Unbelievably, I don't know an uh, ultimatum like that. And I said, well, you know, my neck was hurt. I was doing real well. I was m making more money in the offseason than I was uh, – for the Cowboys or, or getting there. And, uh, and so I retired. And um, so, you know, today the players don't have that, uh, don't have that necessity to go into a good paying job that I did. Uh, they make lots of money in right now in pro football and, uh, and they don't, they can play as long as they want, except for injuries, you know, and thank goodness on, I mean, thank goodness that that happened. I mean, I've been a blessed guy throughout my life. I really have. I mean, how can a guy from Washtenaw Baptist make it to the pro football hall of fame? I mean, other than being blessed and lucky, I was blessed with having a durability, having a system that I understood, having one that was built for me, the Landry Flex and our defensive system. And I got it and it worked well for me. And, and then to come out of it healthy today, you know, so if you're making eight or 9 million, it's probably what I'd be making. I think I'd be one of the a year. So what, 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 what's your motivation to quit? I mean, other than being paralyzed uh, from, you know, the neck down. And uh, so, you know, I don't know what these guys do. I mean, I I'd like to know in their heads, uh, like Sean Lee, you know, you know, for the Cowboys, he's such an intense player. I like him. I, I don't know uh, what, uh, what is going to be the motivating factor other than he just doesn't play and they're going to cut him, you know, right. You know, they just, they're going to cut him that so you don't have any option uh and you're gonna and they'll you know play as long as they can until but so that's i mean it's just a, a question of that's just a different era thank you very much and you know without guys like you there would be no america's team yeah thank you mark <laughs> thanks mark yeah. And thank you, Cliff, for your time. You, you bet, Rick. Everybody's questions thank answered. Rick. You're very generous with your time. And, and uh, just a few more weeks, we will see you in Canton, Ohio for good deal. 21 and something that's long overdue. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rich, very much. I All appreciate right. it. Hope thank I answered you. your questions. Good for you guys. All All right. Right. Congratulations, thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Harris. Thank you very much. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs> Go, yeah, I agree with that. That's the Washita Tigers, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot.